This video is entitled Tables and is a companion piece to the book, so you want to learn to use HTML and CSS. Chapter 7. I'm James Renault, PhD, and I'll be taking you through this, uh, through this presentation. In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to create a table in HTML. I'm going to talk about how to add borders to your table so you can see the table. I'm going to talk about how to add headers and header rows to a table. And then I'm going to talk about how to have cells on a table that span multiple rows, columns, or combination of rows and columns. I'm not going to go into the T-head, T-foot, and T-body structure that can be used inside a table, but you can look that up on your own after you've mastered what's in this video. So an HTML table starts with the table tag and ends with the closed table tag. A table is made up of rows, which are the TR tag, which stands for table row, so the table row starts and ends. And then within the table row are table columns. There are two different types of table columns. There's the TH table header column and the TD table data column. So remember that it's the table and tables are made up of rows and rows are made up of cells or, or columns. Um, and there are two types of columns that a table can have. TDs and THs. Now, you really should strive to make sure that all of your rows have the same number of cells. Now, when we get into some fancier tables where we span cells, you'll see that we still have to have the same number of cells or span cells in each table, or, or the, the table won't render correctly. Do not do not, absolutely never, I don't want to see it, don't want to hear about it, don't ever want you to do, is use a table to format a page. Tables should not be used for page formatting. Remember, we live in a semantic world where the tags have semantic meaning, and uh, a table should be used for data or ideas or concepts that belong in a, ta in a table or tabular view, nothing else. Okay, so don't use a table where you want to for the formatting of it. Use a table for a table of data or of information that needs to be represented in a table. So here is a very simple table that contains three rows and has one column in each of the three rows. Um, let's look at let's look at it. The first table. TR starts the first table row, TH, header, close TH. So the table header is going to, by default, show up as, as a bold, um, bold, but you can always use style to change how, how it looks. Then you can see the next table row begins, and the table says some value, the table data says some value, then we end the second table row, begin the third table row, and do it all again with some other value. Um, you can break it all up into multiple lines to make it easier to read. Remember, you're allowed to put spaces within your HTML. Um, again, don't use for page layout, only for stuff that needs to be shown in rows and columns. Also, we can optionally add an attribute to the table that says border equals one which would put a border around all of the table datas um, and all the table headers on a table and draws a very simple border. The more proper way, the better way to do this is to do it with CSS and to um, maybe say uh, T, TR and then give it a border and then TD and give it a border um, or assign your table an ID and then use a descendant selector to uh, to put borders around around things using the CSS border statement that you've seen prior, or that you'll see in the future. No, you saw it in the box model. You've seen prior. So there are two attributes that can be placed onto the table datas and table 
table headers, the TDs and THs that represent columns, you can add a call span, C-O-L-S-P-A-N, and give it a number, and that says, well, this cell spans that many columns. So you can see that in the first row, I have uh, table data with a one, and then I have a table data with the num with the words two and three, and it spans two columns, and you can see in our table how it spans the two columns. Then notice on the next row, I have a table data that spans two rows that says four and seven, because that sells four and seven on the table if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then notice on the third row, I only define two columns. Why? Well, because the row span column on the second row has come down automatically and already filled up that space for the first column. So it drops that down and then fills it. Um, you can row span and call span in the same cell also. I don't show that, but but it is it is used sometimes that a row span and call span can be applied to the same cell so that it spans multiple columns and multiple rows. When you do a lot of this spanning, a table can become very complex very quickly, but when you use it judiciously, it, it comes in really handily. So here's a sample HTML document with a table on it, and it's a... Uh, it's a, uh, um, a table that contains a home team, um, an away team, and the date of their scheduled game. So maybe this would be a, a schedule for your Little League or softball or, or bowling league or something. And you can see that, that in the first row, I have a table header home, a table header away, a table header date, and then I close the table row. Then you can see I have a table row with a table data east side, table data central, and then I have a data table, no, data table, table data, TD, containing a time. And you do see I wrapped that date in the, in the time tag because the time tag is one of those semantic tags we talked about previously in the other, other videos before this that uh, kind of tell the system and tell the browser, hey, this is a date. This is important. This is a time. So, um, and then you see the next row, and then you see my third row or my fourth row, because the header is the first row, the first game, second game, and the third game says table data column span three, because there are three columns, more games to be announced. So we should see a nice pretty table with three columns and four rows on the next page. And it's exactly what we expected. This concludes our brief introduction to tables and HTML. This presentation is copyright 2020 by James Imrino, Ph.D. All rights are reserved. If you have any questions, comments, critiques, correct, or anything else you'd like to tell me about, maybe even tell me the classes that this is being used in, please contact me at jim at renejm dot com. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, share alike, 4.0 international license, and I'd like to say thank you for watching.